Hi everyone, welcome to my Photoshop tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching about selections. Now, a YouTuber asked me to create this video about all different types of selections in Photoshop. Now, the first one I'm going to be talking about is the Magic Wand tool, which is a great tool. Um, mainly used to take the background out of pictures. Now, if uh, you was going to do that, you would obviously select it and click on to the background. Now, at the top you'll see a tolerance bar. It is normally set to 32 and I'll show you what um, playing around with that means. Now obviously it selects all of the main colour on the background but the only thing it doesn't do it obviously ain't going to get these bits down here you need to hold shift on your keyboard and then select the other bits of white. Now it's made a pretty good selection. Now sometimes um, the Magic Wand tool doesn't make that great a selection um, depending on your picture at the time. Um, so you can play around with the tolerance. Now, if you bring up the tolerance, so let's go to 100% tolerance, we're going to deselect and then we're going to go and select the white again and hold down shift. Now, if I zoom in, you'll see that it selected the white pigments in this top bit right here and on the legs which we don't actually want selected just because uh, it's trying to select the other bits of white in the actual image switches on the legs and there so you want to bring down the tolerance so we can bring that down to 32 or you can bring that down even more to even 20 or whatever you want depending on your picture you have to play around with it so let's deselect and we're just going to hold down shift now that's a pretty good um, selection to begin with um, you can make adjustments um, like if I zoom in obviously the magic wand tool makes a rough um, estimate of the selection you can uh, do a lot more different selections to um, help this method along um, also what the magic wand tool does uh, you can play around with all the settings like anti-analysis um, and all these other bits up here which also help the uh, selection process and once you have selected your uh, major selection on your picture you can press the refine edge and you can play around with the view all different types like that and you can also play around with the uh, smart radius which stops the radius and plus you can play around with the feather uh, feather it a bit to stop it so it doesn't look so jaggedy and once you copy it or cut it away from the image now you want to watch the smart radius as because it plays around uh, with the color as it'll jump to the other bits of color like I said like if you play with the radius so once you've done that you can put the output you can put a layer mask new layer I normally go for a new layer that's what I normally work on and stuff like that um, so it's taken the white away from the actual image itself uh, which is pretty good um, and even if you didn't want to do that you can and you just want to take the actual image out we can go to filter sorry select and inverse selection and it'll make a selection of the actual TV or whatever you've got in your picture now what the magic wand tool doesn't actually do properly is uh, say you have an object with shadows and stuff like that it doesn't work too well on them because as I said it's mainly to take the background out of your pictures um, which if it's a you know one color background then it's going to work a lot better to proper actual images that you take so that's the first one and we'll move on to the next one Now the next selection process is quick masking. Now this process uh, you have to work with other selection tools. So say if, for instance we want to select the sky. Uh, we can go over to 
the magic wand tool that we worked with before and then we're just going to click the sky now obviously it's made the selection uh, we're going to hold down shift and we're just going to take these bits away now it's made an actual quite a bit perfect selection but say for instance your, uh, when you make a selection it's going to muck up and then it's going to go they're going to select a bit down here so let's select that bit down there as well as here so say it's done that then you need to uh, you know correct it so we can hit Q which activates our quick masking now the red is what's not going to be selected so we want all this bit down here to not be selected but we want that to be selected now if we go to our brush tool and we can hit B for the brush and depending on your brush, the hardness, you can pick any brush that you want let's go for that one um, which is the hardest going to be 100% and what we're going to do is paint with black now when you paint with black it's going to paint on the red so these are the stuff that's not going to be selected in the image and if we press X to change the color to white it's just going to take away the bits that's not going to be selected uh, so it makes it's going to be selected so it really depends how long you spend on this because the more time you spend uh, the better your selection is going to be so if we zoom in and I press X on my keyboard and we can just paint in the bits that we don't actually want selected this I'm just going to be very quick because it's going to be a short tutorial just there and you can zoom in and get the buildings and everything if you want I'm just not going to do that at the moment and then you're going to hit Q and it makes a selection uh, based on what we just did and from there you can hit uh, you can right click and then you can copy it or cut it or whatever you want to do with it now you can do this in a reverse process so if we go to control and deselect that and if you want to activate the quick masking we can hit Q and then B on our keyboard and that activates the quick mask and the brush and then you can just paint uh, what you want uh, selected and stuff like that now you can make this uh, process with um, the magic wand tool or the quick selection tool now the magic wand tool obviously don't forget play around with the tolerance um, because as I said it makes a pretty good selection with this process as well like if I show you let's just take these bits with it and from that process it's actually done a pretty great job at selecting the sky as it is but this was just to show you if uh, you couldn't go get a great selection you could use it with the quick masking tool so on to the next step now the next selection tool is the pen tool now the pen tool is very versatile I use it quite a lot now you can make pictures uh, from the pen tool like in the other tutorial I showed you uh, about the pen tool uh, but is mainly used for selection as well so if we hover over that and you want to select the pen tool uh, not some of the others and take for instance this circle now if we start at the top we can create a curve um, which sometimes you have to uh, get used to uh, the pen tool to create the curves and it makes a great selection around the actual image you want now even if you didn't want uh, to do that you can and you can't get to grips with the curve bit you can just go around like that but it will only create straight edges now once you have that um, let's just go and make a sele quick selection around the actual orb itself I'm not going to pay attention to the um, curves because the curves does take a while um, you can right click once you've done uh, your selection and there's a bunch of options here 
Um, but the main one that you want is you'll probably be wanting uh, the uh, make selection which you can click that. There is another way of doing it, you can go to paths which is over here and then go to make selection but this is the quicker way. Um, you can do the feather radius. I normally keep it on one because it suits most images um, and you want to make sure that anti analyzed is clicked on and then click OK and then it'll make a selection. Um, there's other options uh, if we go over to the pen tool um, you can there's a bunch of options here you can use the freeform pen tool the add anchor points so we'll add uh, the points to uh, wherever you want so we can go to there we can add the point here and there and wherever you want to edit the actual uh, thing that you're doing uh, you can also delete some of the anchor points or convert point tool so once you have so say if we have a straight line here um, we can click on the point and we can curve it or do whatever we want to it like that so we can curve all the different things that we need to do um, after that you can go down to uh, the path uh, direct selection tool which is not the black one it's the white one so if you have the black one selected you want to go over and click on that hold down the click and select direct selection tool and this one allows you to edit uh, where you've placed the point the anchor point so we can edit them wherever we want to reposition them and then you can go back and use the uh, convert point tool to do your uh, bending the lines and stuff like that to actually fit but it is a great tool because it makes um, great selections on this one I mainly use it a lot like on my eye tutorials and stuff like that um, it takes a lot of time to learn the process of the pen tool um, like with making objects like in the other one I showed making a Winnie the Pooh picture but um, it is a great selection tool so on to the next selection tool now the next selection tool is the quick selection and if you can't find it, it is under the magic wand tool you just hover over it and hold down your click on your mouse and then select quick selection tool now there's not much to say about this uh, tool it's obviously by its name it's quick um, but also it doesn't always make a great selection um, because as it's that quick um, you have to put in other means of selection with it uh, to get a proper selection depending on the type of technique you're going for and stuff like that so like on this image image right here is great selecting object just go round it's that fast Like that and that's a pretty good um, selection as it is so even if you did want you can go to uh, select modify and feather and you can feather the edges so they're not that jaggedy so let's go five or two and then we can right click and we can go layer via copy or layer via cut so we'll cut it from the image and as you see depending on the feather feather uh, you feather the edge um, you'll get this technique this style here um, I would I've gone for five you can go for two uh, depending on your image also as I said um, so that is a pretty good selection as it is uh, I will say one thing about this tool though um, don't forget that you need to scale the actual brush down like if I bring the brush size up now for bigger images you use a bigger brush um, but obviously don't try and select small things with a with the big brush because it's not going to work like if I did that look as it is it's selected the white which you don't want so for smaller objects that you need to select in your image um, you want to go and scale the brush down to actually fit what you're trying to select at the time so keep bear that in mind and even if it doesn't make a great selection as it is because 
it's cross-referencing with the colours in the background as this is red against white it's going to make a, a pretty good selection because they're you know standoff colours um, but in an actual image it really depends on your image and uh, what it's contrasted with in the background now if you had a red like this and then you had like a reddish background but a paler red then it's going to make the selection all that more difficult that's why you'd have to bring in more selection techniques with this actual technique right now so let's jump over to the next uh, technique <laughs> 